What's one thing that you don't miss about the independent wrestling scene? That's a good question. Scummy promoters. Um, I don't miss getting paid $25 or getting paid by just getting a slice of pizza. It was legit. Either you get pizza or a hot dog or you get $25. That was just like, you know, it. What's one thing now that you're one of wrestling's biggest superstars? One thing that really is everything you dreamed it would be? And then one thing that's just kind of a harsh reality of the business? That's, wow. And I feel at ease when I'm in that square circle. The hardest reality is just knowing that it's a lot of politics, a lot of grueling, grueling traveling, which I didn't realize how hard that would be. Getting on an airplane every single day, you know, sometimes you're in the middle seat, sometimes you're on your way back, sometimes in your first class, you, just, you never know. Do you still dream of having a chicken TV show where you have celebrities do voices for the chickens? And if yeah. so, who are the actors at the top of your list? Yeah. How you know about the chicken uh, cartoon? <laughs> yeah. What, if anything, do you remember about celebrating with Lil Wayne? Um, that night, yeah, I really, I really did your information, huh? <laughs> I, I really did your, your homework. Um, yeah, I had my fair share of whoopings <laughs> off of that. Did you ever catch a whooping for uh, racing cars fast and furious style as a youth in New Jersey? Yeah, you did your research, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, my dad chewed me out a, a bunch of times. So your commitment to the gym is no surprise to those who follow you on Instagram, but some might be shocked to learn that you're actually a very committed eater. Is it true that during the Creed training, mm -hmm. you took your cheat days so seriously that you'd wake up early so that you'd have extra hours to feast? Yeah, without a doubt. Oh, <laughs> you're good, man. You do your good. You do your research, man. Is it true that you form tackled director Peter Berg during your Friday Night Lights audition? <laughs> yeah, dude, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, well, how do you guys get this information, man? I was inside the audition room. Uh, yeah, um. Then you got, got me trying to remember old shit, mm -hmm. like your mouth Hot burning. Sauce. I'm like, what? Trying to reminisce? It's the Hot Ones experience. Stuff. Oh, man. Um, so I know that you fell in love with Salt Lake City almost 20 years ago. It's a place that you and Holly and your kids call home. Research. Wow. But if you were in the UFC, what would your walkout song be? Mm, that's a good one. Mm. Something by ABBA. Nice curveball. Fernando. OK, OK. Just, it would kind of be like this fucking sauce. Like, you know, you like present something soft and romantic and then you fuck them up. I don't know. I'm like crazy right now. This sauce made me crazy. What's one thing that people who cover the entertainment industry focus on too much? And what's one thing that they don't focus on enough? Oh, wow, that's a, that's a really good question. There's such an obsession about celebrity versus actually just the work. And people are also, I think, interested in more than just people talking about whatever Hollywood boringness you can talk about for so many years. When you're scrolling your Twitter mentions, what are the things that you see that warm your heart? And what are the things that you see that make you want to throw your phone under a Zamboni? Nice nod to the equipment. It's often um, not appreciated. I know that you were helping to teach a class for Stanford MBAs called Project U, Building and Extending Your Personal Brand. Yes. Is it true that you started class by having all the students take one minute videos of themselves? Yes, how do you know that? Who told you that? Yes, I wanted to see what they thought their personal brands are. And so part of that is them submitting a video of them talking about themselves and what they think their personal brands are. And in that 20 years, the TV food scene, it's exploded, you know, from the stand and stir shows to the cooking competition boom to the current obsession with culinary travel. And when you look at that timeline, because you've spent about 20 years in this game now, what do you see as some of the watershed moments, the highlights and the lowlights when you look at that time? That's a really interesting question. I have to say 9-11, because the entire country wanted comfort, and they turned to food. Food was all of a sudden the only thing that people really wanted to watch. And I remember what happened to the ratings at Food Network. It was unreal. If anybody ever had any doubts about food's ability to bring people together, completely dispelled by, by that one incredibly tragic event. And then can you give me a band that people make fun of on the internet that you think deserves a lot more respect from a songwriting perspective? That's a great question. And whoever that band is, they deserve that I think about it a little longer. I mean, Nickelback is not as bad as the punishment they get. People ripping on Nickelback is like when your mom used to yell at your dad like, but too much. 
and you were like, I want to see him like get called out, but this is getting ridiculous. You know, people who are really into polo, they'll have these low head meetups where maybe they'll trade or they'll show off their grails. Are there any similar meetups for Visvim heads? That's a good question. There's not. I wish there was. Speaking of dancing, what do you remember about learning to crank that with Soldier Boy? These are, this is a good deep dive, though I have like clearly amnesia about my own life. No idea. In 2015, you gave a commencement speech to the graduating class at Harvard, and now that you have a trillion Scovilles lighting your brain on fire, <laughs> I'm curious what postscript would you add in the age of Russian hacking, Logan Paul, and teenagers eating Tide Pods? Okay, that's a big question. I'd say, hmm, pay attention to the news. Vote and make sure your vote is real. Make sure it's a real democracy and we're not being controlled by outside forces. If you could steal one item out of Casey Neistat's studio, what would you grab? Oh, wow. <clears throat> That's a good question. He's got a lot of stuff in there. He's got drones, he's got cameras, he's got lenses. But I would probably take something like the one wheel or some ridiculous electric transportation that I don't have yet that I want to try. When you look at the comments on the videos or the things that get tweeted at you, what are the things that make you wish that maybe you reviewed breakfast cereals rather than smartphones? <clears throat> That's a great question. People make a purchase and they want to justify it and they will at all costs, no matter what. I bought this iPhone, I spent a thousand bucks on it. You can't tell me this isn't the best phone. And then I come along and tell them about another phone that's better and they don't want to hear it. So I get that. It's frustrating, but I get it. There's a lot of lore surrounding writer's rooms and yeah. I know that your experience was limited, but in that limited experience, I wonder, do the good ideas just naturally float to the top or is there an art in being the loudest voice in the room or a pitch huh. man? Good question. Um, yeah, I think sometimes it's like a lot of timing. If you have a good idea, maybe you shouldn't say it right away, wait you know, until things kind of, there's like a lull, and then pretend you just came up with it. <laughs> when you guys look at how the taste test genre has exploded, when are you proud to be a part of that evolution, and when do you roll your eyes? <laughs> That's a good I, question. I appreciate that question. Uh, most of the thumbnails kind of make us roll our eyes, but they work. I mean, we cover it, and then we show it to you. It's not just about frenetic pacing and, and making stupid facial expressions, which, I mean, I'm guilty of... Uh, one of those, at least. <laughs> yeah. So you guys have been on the internet for over a decade strong, stacked billions of views, and won countless awards. So what I want to do is throw a couple career accomplishments at you, and you guys can tell me if it was a highlight or more of a low light. Does oh, that sound good? Oh. Yeah. All right. Placing third in the TurboTax tax wrap contest judged by Vanilla Ice. Huge highlight. highlight. Huge highlight. We still own the, like, bedazzled medallions that are the TurboTax logo. We're just setting a high school basketball record for hitting 77 three-pointers Oh, in God, a don't season. get him started. How many? 77 three-pointers. And how many seasons? In just a just season. Just one season? Just one season. Link, I know that you did score two unassisted goals in a soccer game one time. Using though. my left, which is my off foot, foot both times. I would like to recognize the unsung heroes of basketball scorekeeping. Because, right, you, for the eighth grade girls team, you kept the score, right? Yeah. Yes, that's right. You've done your work, John. <laughs> I would like to recognize all women's middle school basketball scorekeepers. How about getting rejected by MTV's The Real World? Oh! <laughs> uh, no one. How do you know about that? I love that you know about that. Um, that was, you know what? Uh, it was a low light at the time, extremely high light in retrospect. You might have dodged a... If I had gotten on the real world in 1994, that just would have been a bad time to show myself to the world in that way. What we're gonna do is bust out some of the most ridiculous nouveau flavored ice cream that New York has to offer. So what we'll do is try to guess the flavor Oh, are you making fun of us? <laughs> we are not. I'm not making fun of you. If I were making fun of you, maybe I'd say something like, which cream is the dream? Let's talk about it. But I'm not going to say that. 
I, Jeff Goldblum, you're a man of many mysteries, not the least with food. You seem to be equal parts gourmand and health nut, adventurous at heart, but you also have these idiosyncratic dietary preferences. What do you think is Pittsburgh's greatest contribution to America's culinary canon? <laughs> yeah, I like the way you talk. So you've been in some of the biggest films ever made, <laughs> but you also have achieved this ubiquitous internet fame. What's the difference between a fan who sees you on the street and recognizes you from the latest Wes Anderson movie versus somebody who approaches you because they want a selfie with the gold bloom? Wow, I love that whole question. There are many types, but you know, oftentimes, as you suggest, I think in the question, they can be less, you know, um, knowledgeable about, you know, cinema. So you've said that one of the great foundational lessons that you learned from legendary acting coach Sandy Meisner is that you're only interesting to the extent which you're interested. How has that advice helped you outside of your acting career? It's a very, very good question. Well, you know, the danger in acting is that you go, oh boy, I'm being witnessed. Uh, I need to create some effect. I need to do something about myself. And so your attention kind of can easily get trapped this away and that that, that that's uh, that's not so good but yes in life too I think it's healthy in the sh short time as we've said we have so foolish it would be to not if every day ingest and attend to what the heck is going on and all the things that you're probably never gonna get to but why not continue to be engaged and interested in uh, in in our life and in our world and our universe. Don't you think so? If you were a video <laughs> game programmer and you could make two changes to Mario Odyssey, what would they be? Oh. Hmm. That's a good question. Well, I never wanted to go back and do those silver boxes that are everywhere. You know how those like open up new moons? I could never figure out how to. It's my fault though, it's not their fault. But you can put I can't it on do that. the extra jump, like the extra high jump, that get, and that ruined like maybe 25 moons for me. Mm. I couldn't get, the, I couldn't get to those. Can you guys offer some highlights and lowlights from the rider challenge, a tradition whereby you guys will eat everything on your tour rider, regardless of quantity? Well, that's uh, oh my god, that's wow, how did that you found that one? That's a that's a yeah. great thing that you found out about. I didn't know that challenge. anyone knew about the rider challenge. That was actually just a comedic idea that I had. Yeah, there was like, what do we got? We got like pita bread. Uh, we got. We always have hummus. We got hummus. We got a chocolate, dark chocolate. But it's overall, when you look at it, the spread, it's too much food. You're never yeah, gonna eat it all. It's stupid rock star stuff. And then you usually get catering, and then it just goes to waste, and it's really bad. One of the first things that you ever put on the internet was a Coldplay tribute, and that's when you were going under the name Breezy Lovejoy. <laughs> yes, man. Stop. Which do you Why regret do you more? Like Which do you regret more? Crows. <laughs> I love crows. Can you tell me why you love those squawking birds so much and describe it to me in as much detail as possible? Okay. I'm glad you asked me that question, Sean. <laughs> I feel like we're wasting crows. The crows fly around the park, they pick up the cigarette butts, they drop Crows them off and communicate with one another. They like mourn their dead. If they uh, use tools, like if the crow gets a nut and can't it's a pod, crow. it's not a group, it's a murder. A murder of crows. We need attack crows. It's nighttime. I want to go to the 7-Eleven and get a granola bar. Some uh, gangbanger jumps out and confronts me. Que vato. And I'm just laughing. Cause I'm like three, two, one, bitch. And the crows just come right down on their head. Everyone thinks I'm insane. This shall happen. Which is a higher ranking title? Lieutenant Roasted Botch or Captain save a -ho? <laughs> That's a good question right there. You like that? <laughs> well, you know which one wins. I, I'm not gonna tell you the one. The one that sh it should be is Lieutenant Roasted Botch. Far as you know, the rules and regulations of the game. Okay. But due to the fact that the rules and regulations of the game has been changed, Captain Saberho is very notorious in this world. You feel me? <laughs> what role did a Hot Ones alum and friend of the brand Harley Morenstein play in helping you level up? Oh my God, that's a great question. So when I was starting YouTube, I was a complete loner and loser and nerd, and I knew nothing about it. You know, I was living in Toronto, and everyone else was in LA and in the industry and in, in the heart of it all. I slid into his DMs, I'm like, hey, Harley, you know, I would love if you could educate me a little bit on the YouTube game. 
It wasn't even creepy or weird. He wasn't even trying to go there. <laughs> he just sat down with me and just educated me on everything related to the game. And his conversation is actually what prompted me to take YouTube seriously and make it a career. All right, so besides your obvious charm and charisma, you've built this YouTube legacy through your master of the art of relatability. Mm -hmm. I wonder, does that get harder as you get older? Do you end up like Jay-Z on Kingdom Come, just <laughs> rapping about things no one can relate to? You know what? No one has ever asked me that question, and I need to give you props right now because that's such a good question because that is absolutely what happens. I really pride myself on my ability to be relatable. You know, things that happen in my everyday life, annoying people at the movies, things, something I argued with, with my pa parents, things that anyone watching could be like, yeah, I know what that feels like, and then they share it with their friends. But as my life gets crazy, and I make videos about, oh, I hung out with Dwayne, I hung out with The Rock, oh, I, someone thought I was cool enough to, to give me a private jet for the day. I understand that the average person can't watch that and be like, same. What was your biggest customer pet peeve when you were living in Chicago and waiting tables at Bennigan's between gigs? Oh, that's a, I love that question. It was the guy that would go, I'll have a water. Anyone else want water? Water's for everybody. And he doesn't realize that there's nine people and I have to now bring a tray of nine waters to one asshole who wanted water and eight people who maybe didn't want water, but he wanted to make the joke of like, I'll buy a round of water. Like I hated that. Assam, that's Urdu. Mm -hmm. Or Hindi. One or the other. Why am I asking a snowstorm of a man? No. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Is it Hindi or Urdu? <laughs> like talking to an H&R block. Okay, all whitey then. <laughs> Hilarious, well done. As someone who grew up spending hours at the arcade playing Street Fighter, what blows your mind the Sean, most? you are a gentle man. Thank you, Pete. Uh, that's very sweet. You've done all this research. <laughs> it's really kind of you. Most people don't do this deep dive. <laughs> There's a lot of similarities between the come up for comedians and rappers, but I think the difference is, you know, you grind it out, you make it, and then a rapper will start talking about the lobster that he eats and the champagne that he drinks. But yeah, you don't really dude, hear that. fuck, Sean, you're brilliant. That's right but you don't really hear that coming from No, don't comedians. finish. Everyone knows what you meant. <laughs> don't finish the point. When I get it, they got it. Why is that? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's such a good observation. What's been the most disturbing thing that you've ever seen unnoticed or uncared for at a restaurant on Kitchen Nightmares? Uh, that's a really good question. So um, I went into a refrigeration unit once and saw a tartar sauce three and a half years out of date. How fucking dumb must you be to use this tartar sauce that stank, to use a sauce that's festering, bubbling, like something out of fucking Harry Potter that was off three years ago? One thing that I think you deserve a lot more credit for is trailblazing this sort of Twitch generation that we have now with your series, Chronic Gamer Bro, Girl. Bro, I was talking about, I can't believe you said this. I just was talking last night about um, doing Chronic Gamer Girl on Twitch. Did you learn anything about the dark arts of sandwich making as a delivery driver for D'Angelo, or is I that just a one-off job? I want to my, tip my cap to your research department. That's some real deep cut shit right there. What do you think's a better sandwich city, Chicago or New York? Um, I don't know, that's a good question. I would say they both have really good sandwiches. Are the things that you find funny about being a doctor now different than the bits that you were doing in medical school? That's a great question. I think the bits I was doing in medical school, I really, I really did any medical bits during medical school because I, I thought it was, it was really too soon. So I really, I really just, uh, I just did a lot of dancing. <laughs> what was the best and worst thing about sharing a trailer with Donald Glover during your time on Community? That's the best question ever. The best, the best thing. He'd be working on his early Childish Gambino albums. I got to hear, just through the walls, like early tracks of Freaks and Geeks. But um, having said that, the music got kind of loud. And um, I think I became Grumpy Old Man. <laughs> Won't lie to you. Do you remember your first impression of Coach K when you did his Sirius XM show back in 2013? Dude. Although I hate you, I respect you. Thank you for knowing that. Where is the food better, Madison Square Garden or Yankee Stadium? That is a good question. Madison yeah. Square Garden, um, if you are like a season ticket holder for the Rangers or the Knicks, they have like the VIP before the game and they have like the biggest prawns mm -hmm. I've ever seen. Like, 
And this is like people from Long Island. Like, let me get my fucking prawn on. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah, hey, got a couple prawns here. Hey, uh, you know who's a good guy? Lecter. You ever seen him when he played? Oh yeah. my god. Yo. Like, that was a guy right there. Henrik Ludquist never lets a punk get past him. That's oh. right. This Trump guy, he's doing the right job. If the liberals let him read, you know. Uh, you know anyway, I gotta go. My train around Conkham is coming in. All right. Gotta leave. You know, I'll be back here next week uh, to catch Billy Joel. Let's go, Rangers. So being from New Orleans, I know that you're a huge Saints fan, and I don't mean to dig up any old wounds, but is it true that you had an ex-girlfriend cheat on you with one of the offensive linemen? Damn, boy, you guys are good. <laughs> Where'd you have a better time, at the Ren Fair or the Field of Dreams house? Ooh, wow, you guys have good questions, dude. I forgot about my own life. I feel bad, man. I feel like I'm doing all the talking, you know? But that's how it goes. You know that, as a podcast yeah. guy. Do you feel, do you feel like when you're hosting a guest, like what responsibility do you think you have? Um, well, that's a good question. You know, I just want to keep the conversation just honestly just as comfortable as I can these days. I feel like people like that. In your series, Chelsea Does, there's an episode where you eat this six course marijuana infused mm -hmm. meal. Is that the trippiest dinner experience you've ever had or does the crown still go to that Taco Bell run you did on mushrooms with large Luke? Thank you for bringing that up. Um, I know that's from one of my books. Like, I don't hike because I don't give a shit. You do about, hike sometimes. Well, I hike? Yeah. What, no, I don't think I hike. When did you, how do you know what I'm up to? Because, you know, I do a lot of, I do a lot of reading on you Yeah, before. I don't hike. No, I don't. I'm not into hiking in LA. I don't think the views are that pretty here. Yeah. If I'm in some great location, I'll go hiking. In like South Africa, they have this thing called Lion's Head. Right. And I did that hike. You did do that hike. Yeah, and you that got was to cool. the top and it was and a beautiful, beautiful picture. Beautiful. That's where like, oh, wow. Yeah. You really do your research. <laughs> wow. That's interesting. Good for you. You take your job seriously. Oh, thank you, Chelsea. Well, I mean, you're welcome. Which movie set had better food, Chef, or he's just not that into you? Because I think most people would think the former, but I've read that Drew Barrymore had that, like, chocolate, oh, yeah, chocolate fountain, fountain. I forgot about that. And oh, the my taco God. party all the time. Yeah, that was awesome. Which is the tougher crowd to please, comic book obsessives or theater buffs? Um, hmm, that's an interesting question. I guess... Probably comic book obsessives. Maybe because it's material that they've loved from childhood, and so they have this certain kind of ownership over these characters or the storylines. And you know how it is when you love something from being a kid, and then it comes, you know, it's not the way that you imagined it to be. Like, it doesn't mean you can't grow to love it, um, but it's, you know, you have feelings about it. So, Die Hard. Is it a Christmas movie or not a Christmas movie? Yes, very stupid question. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a bigger Miami Heat fan, you or Lil Wayne? That's a crazy question. I'm Miami everything. It's Miami against everybody. I'm Miami everything. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, fuck off. Right now, I need to see a fucking doctor. Fuck yourself. Fuck you, Sean. <laughs> Shame on you, big boy.